Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Max. And this is Movies Actually, where we give you an honest review of the movies we've meddled with so mischievously over at Maybe Movies. And this time, we are talking about Falling Down, the 1993 Joel Schumacher-directed film starring Michael Douglas, Robert Duvall, Barbara Hershey, and of course, Rachel Ticotin, just to name a few of the many people yes. in the film. Yeah. Uh, apparently as well, I think it's the guy on the freeway mm. who he meets with the cop when, when they move the car. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, that, I believe, is... I think his name is Ebay Rowe Smith, the okay. guy who wrote the film. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, nice call out. Yeah, because I saw it in the, in the cast list. He's, he's in there, and it just says man on freeway, so I'm assuming it must be him. It must be him. Yeah. He's the only one that has any lines. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Ex- yeah exactly. Um, so, yeah, so this was, curiously enough, this would have been half of our February matchup from two years ago. Oh, indeed. Yes, it is. So, a bit of an anniversary of sorts. Yes. Yeah. Oh, dear. I'm trying to think. It's, again, it's another one of those ones. It's like, where the hell? So, 93, I would have been living in France... I wouldn't have seen it till I came back. So I, I think this one may have been a recommendation from my friend Rob, who uh, is a friend of mine from college, mm-hmm. who would have told me about it when I moved back to England, August 93. Oh, right. So okay. this came out at the beginning of the year. So it would have been late 93, early 94 that I would have seen it. And just... Wow. <laughs> even then, even even at, at, the, at the, uh, well, the tender age of 19. <laughs> yeah. I get it. <laughs> you know, that, I mean, that, that, I suppose that's a that, that doesn't say much for our society, but it really, um, really doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. doesn't it really it. doesn't. <laughs> now, for me, it's a little bit later. This is uh, this is a bizarre one. This is, wasn't a recommendation from a friend or anything like that. There was a band I was quite into in the nineties called Frontline Assembly, and there was one album in particular called Millennium that I really, really loved, and it had loads and loads of samples from various films in it. Few of them I was able to identify, like Hellraiser 3 and things like that. But there were a huge chunk, and I was like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. And then it must have been 95, 96. I think I I rented a movie that had a trailer for Falling Down on it, and it had one of the lines from the album in the trailer. And I was like, ah, that's the one. Now I need to see this so I understand the context and everything. Perhaps unsurprisingly, fell in love with it pretty much straight away. It has so much to say, this movie. Oh, my God. It's, it's, so much to say. Uh, I'm sure I read somewhere, a critic at the time says, that every so often, uh, Hollywood makes a mistake and makes a really good film. <laughs> I thought you were going to say every time, every once in a while, Hollywood makes a mistake and tells the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably part of it as well. I can't, again, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, essentially. Yeah. And, that's, and that is this film. The script is so tight. We were, we were discussing it on our rewatch, getting ready for this, and it really is an amazing script on multiple levels and through multiple um, lenses of the filmmaking process, you can see just how really incredibly well put together the script is. If you only know Joel, Sch- Joel Schumacher as, oh, he's the one who made the shit Batman films, no, 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 go watch this. It's almost a surprise that he directed it. It is. It, I mean, even The Lost Boys is excessive. This film isn't, it reaches excess, but it is not excessive as a film. Mm. I mean, certainly not a Batman movie, if you know what I mean. No, 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 it's so understated. It's really grounded, and normally Schumacher does big statements. He does. It's, it's a real change of pace for him. I really was surprised when I discovered it was a Schumacher film, because I was like, this can't be right. No, <laughs> no. But it's, it's a masterclass. It's a masterclass in, amongst other things, show, don't tell. Yes. Or, again, on multiple levels, in multiple ways. Well, again, as we said, I mean, that film's now 31 years old, almost. <gasps> Practically now, because oh, I think it came out. Because when I looked at it, it's... Um, so it was made for about 25 million, took 96 of the box office. Is that all? Well, I would have... That's three times his money, though. It's such a great movie, I would have expected it to make more, that's all. Yeah, at the time, though, I mean, obviously that was a lot at the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is true. Yeah, that is. Uh, it took number one slot... In its first two weeks at the box office, knocking off the previous number one, which was Groundhog Day. Oh, which is saying something then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it just gets better with age. I mean, again, I don't know how many times I've seen it, and again, it's one of those films you will always spot something else. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
in many ways, it's a film that is as relevant now as it was then. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, especially in terms of the cynicism of the world that's presented mm -hmm. and the various ways in which fundamental parts of society are rendered obsolete. Yes. You told me that I was not economically viable. Which is, unfortunately, a trend that continues to this day, let's be honest. It is. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, just a little bit about what the film's about, if you don't know anything about it. This is the life of Michael Douglas' character. Technically, I think, listed as Defence. He is in the credits. He does, obviously, they do say his name in the film, but yeah, in the, in the credit, he's credited as Defence. Yeah. Uh, who is a guy in his late 30s who's just had enough. Yes, yeah. Uh, it, it opens with him stuck in a traffic jam. He clearly has enough of the situation and heads off to make his own way across the city and chaos ensues which apparently it was at the time because this was filmed um they started filming around april oh god i just realized what you're referring to yeah they had to stop filming because of the la riots oh god it never even crossed my mind no of course oh wow what? so they, yeah they started filming around april time they had to stop in early may they tried to pick it up again sort of later in may and were told no they couldn't they were having to shoot shorter and shorter days because of the riots, and in the end it wasn't finished till like the end of June. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'd forgotten all about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and th that's pretty much all we can tell you about, about the plot, because one, obviously, we didn't really want to spoil it for you, but if you've ever felt... I've, I've had enough. If you've ever felt like you've, you're on the verge of going postal... Yeah. You know, watch this. I'd be very, very careful who you talk to about that. There is catharsis to be had at the very least. Mm. Also, it's a very eminently quotable film. Oh, it is. In America, we have the freedom of speech, the right to disagree. I was, I was, I was thinking about this earlier as well, and again, it may be a bit too much. It might not be too much of a tangential link mm. to say it, but I had a couple of minutes where I was thinking about It's a Wonderful Life. All right. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll, 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 I'll wander down that lane with you. Why? If only... For the simple fact that there is something, there, there is a commonality in that at a certain point, he's worth more dead than alive. He's, oh! Can't tell you. Mmm. Hmm. That's given him oh. something to think about, hasn't That's it? That's an interesting <laughs> point, yeah. Yeah, okay. And, again, and it also and again, features a man at a certain point who has simply reached his limit. I've done everything they told me. Yes. Yeah, I did, every, I did all of the right things. So it's almost obviously it's not Christmas, but um, no, no. But I, I, I can see. I think I can see where you're yeah. leaning with that. Yeah, I think mm. I can get into that a little. Like I said at the beginning, this is a film that has a lot to say. Uh, one of the things you'll notice straight away is the pervasive mood of cynicism. Oh yeah, sprinkled throughout from almost every level and every angle of society towards both the antagonist and protagonist of this story. Exactly. And what's wonderful about that is, is that it's, it colours everybody from the headline cast to the extras. It, mm. it, you know, everybody is tainted, is tar say tainted. Everyone is tarred with that brush. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's a pretty sweeping indictment of the cynicism of modern society. But it's so much more than that as well. I, I believe you said that in an interview, the, the script writer said he was trying to write about the death of old America, the American dream. Yes. And I can see that, but in places I can also see that the script actually goes further. In places it highlights the obsolescence of the nuclear family. In others, it highlights the obsolescence of men in society as... As the motivating force. As a motivating force, as breadwinners. Michael Douglas says at one point, I can't even... I can't even support my family. I can't even support my family. I can't even support my child. Yes. That's it. Rendered helpless, powerless and obsolete. And the various ways in which they people can respond to this, um, particularly in the flip sides between Defence and Robert Duvall's character Pendergast, as two men who've chosen to invest in the nuclear family and the old-fashioned way of living and have found themselves left behind in how they both choose to react to that situation. Absolutely. It's also, again, this is just something that's just occurred to me now while we've been talking, and I don't know what it is about this film. Maybe it's because of the side of LA that it chooses to show and also the way it's shot. There's something you can almost feel because the fact that this is, it's this really hot day in LA. You can almost feel the say, heat coming off it, can't you? I swear to God that somewhere in the script it said it is the hottest day in the summer of LA or something yeah, like that. You exactly. know, it's, it's the absolute worst. But for some reason, there's something about it that always makes me think of They Live. And I don't know why. 
I don't know if it's the way it's shot. I don't know. Again, if it's just the level, obviously the, the areas of, of LA that they focus on, because it's mostly kind of like homeless areas and gangland areas and things like that. Uh, no, no, yeah, well, no, because the world that Nada and everybody else lives in is that close to the edge of, of that. It's not in the gangland, but it's in the region of that world. They're both looking at society from a particular level. Yes, that's true. That's probably why, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I can see what you're saying, yeah. But, yes, if you if you hadn't already guessed it, we, we absolutely do highly, highly recommend this. Film. Oh, absolutely. I'm just going to uh, go straight away with... Absolutely, yeah. I mean... Thumbs up all the way. As you said, it's interesting to point out that, that a film made almost well, yeah, 31 years ago is just as relevant today and, you know, and, and it could apply just as much to this, you know, to our society now as it did then. It shows you how little things have changed. Really? How very little? Absolutely. But I believe it's your birthday soon, isn't it? It is. I think I think Trent might have a present for you. Oh, hello, Trent. He does have a present for you, look. Hang on. It's just a gift. <laughs> it's okay. It's just an invite to a game. Oh, a game? Yes. I love <laughs> games. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. As always, guys. TTFN. Don't forget me. <laughs>